Today we're gonna make easy cast iron pizza two ways and have the taste tester decide which one of those ways he likes better. We've made pizza numerous times on this channel, probably like 20 times. We're making similar dough again today, same dough. We're gonna do two pizzas in the cast iron, one a thick one, one a thin one, completely different types of pizza. And the thick one is gonna to get toppings because when you do a thick one like this, you can put a lot of toppings, you can hold a lot of weight. As far as the ingredients for the dough, I have 406 grams of bread flour here. I'm using King Arthur just because King Arthur is accessible to everybody. I'm not using all Trump's or anything that's like predominantly used by pizzerias in New York. There's a little bit of olive oil in there, one tablespoon. There is two grams or a half teaspoon of instant dry yeast. I always use SAF brand instant dry yeast. It's easy, you can mix it in right with the salt. Nothing happens. You'll see in a second when we make the dough and we're gonna make the dough by hand. If you got a KitchenAid uh, mixer, by all means do it, it's even simpler. So for salt, we have one and a half teaspoons of fine sea salt. I have one teaspoon of sugar. Uh, feel free to use diastatic malt powder. I use diastatic malt powder in a lot of my pizza recipes. There's only a few where I really say to use it specifically in the recipe card for our website, just because it's another one of those fringe ingredients that like, unless you're a baker and stuff like that, you're probably gonna be like, why do I gotta buy all this? You don't need it. It helps with browning. It makes it a little bit more golden. Bagel shops use it to mix the bagels really golden. We have 260 grams of water or nine ounces and everything's in gram form will be in the description. As far as the ingredients for the pizza, the one that's thick is going to get one pound of bulk sausage and we will saute that up a little bit instead of putting it on raw though you probably could get away with it raw we probably would cook all in time but we're going to be able to take a little bit of the moisture out of it by doing that brown it up and the same thing with the mushrooms which is more important this is a pound of mushrooms we're going to cook them first just to get the water out of them along those lines getting water out i have this over here now which there's not much water here but let me show you how much <laughs> how much water it really got. And I actually dumped some of this out already. So Tara was remarking, but she doesn't see me always making these recipes. She's like, I can't believe how much water is in that. There was more than that, you know, just tomato water in two cans, uh, 28 ounce cans of Sclafani crushed tomatoes. You really need to drain them. If you don't drain them, you're gonna be putting all that on your pizza and it's gonna be very wet. Now, again, because we're using cast iron pan, it's forgiving. This is the simplest of all recipes you can make because it's containing everything. You still gotta get the moisture out of it. Mozzarella, I recommend using a dry mozzarella. I'm using Galvani brand. Pizzerias, they just use grande, you know, but Galvani is good. It's a pretty, pretty dry. You could also use string cheese. Those are really dry and that'll work too. A little garlic oil is gonna go on both pizzas. Pecorino Romano is gonna go on both pizzas, just a couple tablespoons, and Sicilian oregano wouldn't be pizza without this type of oregano. And you can buy this on Amazon if you can't find it in your local store. It goes on pretty much every pizza in the New York area. Same thing goes for the tomatoes. These Sclafani are very, very similar to the uh, Stanislaus brand that is used by probably 80 or 90% of all pizzerias. These are New Jersey tomatoes and Stanislaus are California. So, you know, nine out of 10 New York pizzerias are not using tomatoes from Italy. All right, let's make the dough and get into making the pizzas right now. Again, you can put all this together, throw it in your KitchenAid, level two, couple minutes, knock down the sides, another three or four minutes, ball it up, right in your fridge, 24 hours, you have amazing pizza dough. Same thing here, it might take a little bit longer hand kneading, 24 hours in the fridge, amazing pizza dough. If you do 48 hours, it'll taste even better, 72 hours, even more so. So that's 406 grams of bread flour, or if you don't want to use a scale, it's rough, roughly three and a half cups. You can't really measure two grams on most scales, so a half a teaspoon of instant dry yeast. Okay, one and a half teaspoons of fine sea salts. If you're worried about them touching, it doesn't matter. This is why bakeries and pizzerias use this product. One teaspoon of sugar. Those are our dry ingredients. I'm mixing them together, guys. It's touching, okay? It doesn't matter, really. So yeah, the reason I go on about this is people are unsure about pizza. That's why I wanted to do this one for you guys. This is the easiest type of pizza to make. This is 260 grams of aqua or nine ounces. All we need to do here is to form a rough shaggy mass. And what I like to do is I like to keep the oil to last. That allows me to kind of like knock the edges back. One tablespoon of olive oil. We're using regular olive oil. We're not using extra virgin. Just try your best to get it all together. All right, I'm just gonna bring this down to the cutting board here and then bring it all together and start kneading. If it's too sticky, which it probably will be, you can put an inverted bowl on top of it and let it warm up. But we'll see how much kneading we can do right now. We wanna be able to knead this for about seven minutes. All right, so this is very sticky now. It's a little hard for me to 
do much. So I'm just gonna turn, put it like this, like a ball. And you can use a clean one or the one you just used, just like this. Give it like 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, come back to it and knead again. All right, you can see it's getting more workable now. If you get tired, just do like that. Do that again, just get it covered so no air. Wait another 10 minutes, come back to it. You want a total of seven minutes kneading time. Honestly, with a cold ferment, you could just mix your stuff together and you really don't even need to knead it. But you know, the kneading is gonna bring more strength into it. This one I've done for about five minutes now total. So the ball, it you can just pull it out over it's on its side like this a couple times, then just go like this and just keep hitting it under. Now, if it gets too sticky at this point for yourself, touch your olive oil on your hands like this, and then just do it. You need something that's at least two quarts in size. You want it to be about double or triple the size of it. I'm gonna oil it. Okay, I'm just gonna pinch, close that air in right down, seam side down in there. Put a piece of plastic wrap if you're not sure if it's super tight, and then put it in the refrigerator. Be back in a minute with our overnight dough balls. Okay guys, got our two cast iron pans. You can see the difference in them, okay? This is a 14 and a half roughly, and this one's about an 11. They're very, very different. But our dough balls, our 24 ounce dough balls, they're exactly the same. By using that same 24 ounce weight, you're gonna get an entirely different pizza depending on where you, where you put it in. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put basically a lot of olive oil at the bottom here. Probably about three or four tablespoons in the small one, and then the big one, definitely more. So similar to how we did the grandma pizza, you're putting a ton of oil at the bottom. It's gonna like kind of fry it. This is overnight, this is how this looks. You can see, nice and smooth dough ball. You don't have to remove this in any way. You don't have to worry really about the degassing or anything because you're not doing a, a regular New York pizza. So I can just kind of let it fall in there and just pressing it out, probably thinking like, that's not even close to the amount enough dough for this. It's more than enough, trust me, you'll see. Dough is still a little cold right now. There's a lot of olive oil in this pan. But that's good. It's gonna help fry that bottom. And if the bottom doesn't get perfect, what's great about a cast iron pizza, it's one of the best advantages of it. You can just stick it right on a burner and then you can just toast your bottom. Okay, and then you can just use plastic wrap to cover this. And if your dough was relatively cold, you should just wait like an hour before you return back to it. So while we're waiting, I'm gonna do the sausage and the mushrooms. I'm gonna heat this up to about a touch more than medium heat. You can do your mushrooms with nothing in the pan at all. You don't have to use oil or anything. I'm gonna use a little bit of olive oil though. This isn't that big. I mean, I should be using a bigger pan or doing two batches if I wanted to get the mushrooms brown. All right, guys, so now you can see the water is releasing from them. See that little bubbles? This is all water there. See, they're nice and brown now and a lot smaller. I don't salt mushrooms until after the water releases. You can use canned mushrooms and believe it or not, most pizzerias, that's what they use. So we thought we had a lot, now we don't. That's what we have and that'll be, honestly, that'll be a good amount for our little pizza. Yep, that's that. All right, we can use the same pan right now for the sausage. About that medium heat again, maybe a tiny bit more. So this is a bulk Italian fennel sausage from a local place and I have a meat masher now, which is a great tool. But for now, just to brown it, just spread it out as best you can, let one side brown and then we'll go back in after and break it up. If you have a sausage, like a mass produced sausage from like a chain store or whatnot, there might not be any fat in it. So you might need to put a little bit of oil in your pan. All right, so it's been a couple minutes. You don't need to kill this sausage here because we're gonna put it in the oven obviously, but I wanted to give it a little bit of a head start. That's a little brown there, you, as you can see. So I'm just gonna break it up a little bit. It's been a little bit over an hour, probably an hour and 20 minutes. Small one's completely filled. You could save your plastic because you might need to put it back on. You know, this is filled very well. And I think this will be ready for baking right away. Our oven is set to 550 degrees and you could set it for about 30 minutes before you're gonna put it in. Just set your oven to the highest level. A lot of ovens, uh, regular home ovens don't go to 550. Mine does, I'm lucky. And the big one too has essentially filled, almost filled, not, not completely. So we could do a tiny bit more stretching here and it's very, very warm now the dough. If you want, you can just grab it a little bit of it and you can just kind of stretch the sides like this. And it's staying now, it's not moving back when I do this. We're gonna put on our toppings now. I am going to mix in 
a little bit of salt, just a little bit in here. These are two 28 ounce cans of Scofani tomatoes. Scofani tomatoes are a little bit on the salty side, so maybe like a half a teaspoon there, but it just really depends how your mozzarella is, what type of brand you're using. If that's on the salty side, what type of toppings, if you do use toppings, if those are on the salty side. All right, so this is extremely thick sauce right now. Is it possible that I drained it too much? Yes. Spoon it like that. What's nice about doing a pan pizza is you can put your stuff all the way to the edges. You know, the crust doesn't matter. And the recipe card is for this size pan, which is an 11 inch pan, 11, 12 inch pan. Yeah, 12 ounces. So about, you know, about that much. You know, this is a personal preference thing. If you don't like it, like really saucy, then do a little bit less. Cheese is 10 ounces that we have. Once again, personal preference, do what you want. So now, sausage and the mushrooms. That was about a half of the of the sausage, which was like a half a pound. So this has moisture in here. So I'm just like leaving the moisture in the pan and just taking my mushrooms. This is why we cooked them like that. We wanted to get rid of most of that moisture. If you recall, this is what we made our garlic oil. So we use this on the grandma. This is good stuff, potent stuff. This makes your pizza better. Now, I don't use this on a regular New York slice. I use it on all my pan pizzas. Okay, I have Sicilian oregano and I have pecorino. We'll put that on a couple minutes before the pizza is finished. Let's put the toppings on the other one. So yeah, this one is just sauce and cheese. We'll do a little bit of basil leaves at the end. It's like, it's almost like a paste now. There's so much water in these cans. All right, cheese, we're just gonna do a little sprinkle. Again, you know, nothing has to be perfect here. You're using a cast iron. So we're gonna do the garlic oil on this one again too. Guys, if you don't want this, don't do it. Now listen, if, a, a lot of you made the grandma, so you're gonna ask me about this. The grandma's a little bit better because that aluminum pan, at, when it's hitting, and it's not even at 550, the grandma, we cook it at 450, put it on the bottom, it just like, like just crisps it. You know, this thing, because of the mass of this, it doesn't do it as quickly, but this is still good. And what's great about this, and you'll see in a minute, we can cook the bottom on a stove if it's not brown enough. So it's really simple. All right, so 550 degree oven in the middle. This one, which is the recipe card, is gonna take roughly 14 minutes. Then we're gonna pull it out. We're gonna top it with the pecorino and a little bit of the oregano, a couple more minutes. So you're, gonna, you're at like a 15 to 18 minute total cooking time on this. This one is much thinner, same amount of dough, but we're in a much larger pan. This one is gonna take about three minutes less to cook. So initially I'm gonna do 14 here and 11 here. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so we're gonna to top this with the pecorino and oregano. What I wanna do for this one to make it look, it doesn't, it doesn't look so little, it's too much cheese. It doesn't, there's not enough color break. We'll put some basil leaves on this one. I think that's good. About three, two, three, four more minutes until they're done. Remember, like I said, if it's not, if they're not cooked enough on the bottom, if they're not brown enough, we'll hit it up uh, on our burner. All right, guys, so honestly, I put it in for three more minutes. It wasn't enough, so I left it in for two more. That's all you have to do with this. We'll check the bottom right now, and uh, we'll show you, and then we'll, depending on how that bottom is, we'll determine if we need to put the whole pizza on a burner. You could also cut it up, and if you're not happy, you could do an individual slice in a pan. Super simple. Let's take a look at that bottom. You guys, be really careful with this. These pans are so hot. See that? So it's like golden, but it could definitely be cooked a little bit more. I can't even peel this one back. There's so much stuff on it. So what we'll do is we'll put this one on the burner. We'll take a piece of it. Uh, I'll try to peek here somehow. We'll put, put maybe put a burner for a little bit, get it brown, and we're gonna have the taste tester try both of them. The only thing I have to warn you about, if you do do this, and you should do this if you're if you're not happy with the bottom, just don't put your heat too high. So you only need you need less than medium here. You can like rotate it if you want but you'll hear it crisp. You can even like move it now once you unlock it. Yep, and that's browning up very quickly. So it's really simple to do this, guys. Just get it to your liking, just keep looking at it. This one's not gonna need as much time. This is basically a 14 inch, and this is a much smaller one, almost kind of like a deep dish. We're gonna cut a slice of both of these and have the taste tester determine which one is better. Guys, now this is so big, it's so thick, this one. You know, Tara, you think it's a fork and I, knife pizza. Yeah, I think that's a fork and knife pizza. This one you can definitely do. What's in this? It's just regular pizza dough that I, my pizza dough, sauce, cheese. This is really good. Yeah, so the bottom got crisp, we crisped up the bottom with, with with the burner. That's all you have to do, guys. So it's nice, you know, it's not as good as like if you would, you know, if you did the grandma or nowhere near to like if you do a regular 
New York pizza when you're on the steel. It's easy. You can't screw this one up. If you didn't put it in long enough, you just put it back in the oven. You just keep cooking it. It has the same flavor, the dough though. I like it. You like it? Yeah. All right. So they're the same dough, James, but this was in a much smaller pan, so therefore it's a very large, thick piece. It has sausage and mushrooms on it. Mm, that's a good crunch I just heard there. Yeah. Good? Mm-hmm. I'm hearing that crunch again. <laughs> it's like, it's, he's got the lav mic on. You're gonna hear yeah. that. It's gonna be like, It sounds really good. <laughs> and just so you guys see it, because you probably, I don't know if you got a good image of it before. Here's the, the thinner one, the larger pie. You know, cheese, cheese didn't melt as much. This is the Galbani. There's definitely some liquid in there. You know, use a different cheese if you want. We'll play around your favorite ingredients. It's more just like the general idea of like not stressing with, with pizza. So each one I rate? Yep, you want to rate the thin one and the thick one. Fingers crossed on this one. Okay, so you said you like the sausage one because those, and the mushrooms, those are your two favorite toppings. Yeah, and I just love plain pizza already. And this is just like really good. Like the sauce and cheese is really good on that. I think you put like a good amount of everything on this one. The cheese and sauce is also really good on this one. And I gave it both tens. Wow. wow. Both tens. Thank you. You're welcome. Tell them about how much you love doing the jarred sauce uh, Oh yeah, battle. the jarred sauce was so fun. And we did a second one. Yeah, we did a second one. We like tried the um, tried five new flavors. Six. Six, Six yes. Yeah. By the time you see this one, th we'll probably have three more out. That was a really fun video. We're gonna do more taste testing. For anybody who's worried, you know, saying that the channel's gonna go downhill by doing it, the channel's not going downhill, guys. Almost 400 recipes on our website. There's almost 250 recipe videos here on YouTube, and we're not going anywhere. Okay, we're just having some fun. And we actually are still trying to give you value even in those taste testings. This guy knew right away what was good and what wasn't in that taste testing. And he knows what's good right now, <laughs> definitely.